Do you have items in your craft stash that are neglected and unused, but you can't bear to get rid of them? Welcome to Use It or Lose It, a weekly YouTube series where I'll dive into the products that you have lying around in your craft room and the products I have lying around in mine. After I've created something, I'll decide if I think I'll use it again or if it needs to give up that precious space in my stash, and I hope you'll play along. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Use It or Lose It. Today we are going to talk about paper flowers. Now I have to admit that I lost my paper flowers a long time ago, but a lot of you still have them around, so I decided to see if I could find some, and I did at Hobby Lobby. I bought this package. I really liked the colors here, and so uh, I chose this pack to work with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate it in with the new Maggie Holmes Flourish collection. The colors match pretty well, and I think that one one reason these flowers are hard to use is because they've been around for so long that sometimes they can feel a little bit dated. So I think one of the ways to get them used up is to incorporate them in with newer collections. So I am going to go ahead and get this layout started. I have a fun idea for this layout, and then at the end of the video, as usual, I will show you some more ideas on ways to use your paper flowers. So because I'm gonna go kind of crazy with the flowers, I'm starting with a white cardstock background. And what I'm doing now is I'm picking through the flowers and I'm kind of finding colors um, and different, sh well right now what I'm doing is I'm putting the different types of flowers together, so the same size and, sh and uh, type of flower together, uh, not worrying about color because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create kind of a ruffle at the bottom. And I thought at first that I might create it by using all of the same flower on one row. Uh, but what I decide to do instead is to create kind of a rainbow look. And so now I'm playing around with the colors to see how I can arrange them in kind of a rainbow order. So I'm pulling out all of the blues and then there's not very many greens, but I'm still going to use them. Uh, and there's some lighter blues as well. And then there's some yellows and you can see that there's just different shades. This is just a variety pack. So I just pulled out whatever it had. And as I mentioned before, I didn't have any in my stash anymore. And so I just bought this one package and I still have a ton left over. So even with one package, you can, you can get a lot out of it. And, uh, as many of you have said, a lot of you have a ton of these. So uh, even if you only had one color, I think this would be really awesome, or you could change up the colors. And I'll show you more of that, like more of ideas of ways that you can do that at the end. Now here I'm just arranging them by color, but I plan to fold them all in half and create a ruffle, but I really love the way that it looks, even just with the flowers all laid out like that. So what I'm doing basically is I'm just laying down a piece of double-sided sticky tape from Thermo Web, and I am just folding the flowers in half to create kind of like that little ruffle trim. And then I'm just using my Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive to add a little bit of liquid glue to glue down the, um, the second layer, like so where I folded it over. Because obviously the tape is only holding to the back of the flowers. And so I don't wanna put too much because I want them to have still a lot of texture and dimension, and they do, which I love. Uh, so I'm just putting a little bit. And you can see I'm just switching up the colors here a little bit. I'm going from um, from color to color, but sometimes where there weren't enough of, of a single shade, I just mixed the shades together. And I think it turns out so pretty. I, I'm like, I looked at this over and over when I, while I was doing it, it just looked prettier and prettier. I think this would look really cool on an entire background, but I only end up doing about half of it. So I sped this up way fast. I sped it up like times five or six here, just because I don't think you, uh, I think you get the idea of folding the flower in half and then putting it down. Now, what I tried to do, some of the flowers are smaller and some are bigger. And so I just tried to, to vary it. And then I also tried to make it so that if there were smaller flowers below, then I put a larger flower above, folded above it so that the petals went down farther. I don't know if that makes sense, but you can just kind of play with it until it gets to a point that you like it. And I'm going to skip ahead just a tiny bit here. I, you can see I've gotten up to this pink layer. And for my final layer, what I'm going to do is kind of like this. It's a really soft purpley pink. It's almost a lilac shade. And I really love that color right now. And um, so there's not all of one shade. So I'm using a few there. And I'm just sticking those last little flowers down. Now, I was struggling to find 
a, a nice soft purple flower to go in that last space. I didn't want to have to use that pink one because it was the same color as the one below it, but I ended up finding one and so I glued it down and now I'm just kind of gluing uh, the pieces down again with the, the liquid glue and look how pretty that looks. I'm obsessed with it. It's so cool looking. I think this would look really cool in a circle. I'm taking a picture to post on Instagram, which I actually I actually don't post that picture on Instagram. I post a different one. But um, anyway, I just think it turned out really super cool. I love it. I would do this again for sure. And with the flowers that I have left, if I can, if I can, the colors, I use the colors that I love. And so I don't know what about the colors that are left, but we'll see if I use them again. So now I'm looking for something to kind of I want to create a border there. So I looked through my washi tape. I recently made a swatch book of all of my washi and uh, I thought about using that purpley pink washi tape and it matched exactly, but it just didn't look right and it was really bumpy. So I'm gonna just think about it for a little while, see what I wanna do. And now I'm trying to decide how I'm going to adhere my photo. I decided that I definitely needed my photo to be matted. And so I'm matting it just on some white cardstock there. Now my photo is four by six and that cardstock I bought pre-cut and packaged at Hobby Lobby or no Michaels. And it's just slight, like it's, it's sized to mat a four by six photo. And because I do it so often, I love uh, just using those. And I also use them to, on my typewriter for journaling too, so. So I thought it might be nice to have that bold black across uh, the top of those, just kind of holding them all in. But instead I decided to go with kind of that monochromatic look. So I found this really old We Are Memory Keepers paper. It's a striped purpley pink paper. And I keep every scrap of this because that, that color isn't found very often and I find that I wanna use it every once in a while. So I've had that for a long time. And so I'm just putting some glue. I only put, a uh, I put foam foam adhesive just to the top of that because the bottom of it needs to be able to accommodate the flowers that are lifting up. And then I kind of held it down while the glue dried a little bit. So um, here I'm deciding that I think I want to add some mixed media behind my photo just to help the photo stand out even more um, because it's got that white frame around it and it's on the white background. And so what I do is I pull out my mold lavender uh, Tim Holtz Distress Ink and I put it on some packaging and spritz it with a little bit of water and I'm just going to smush it around and at first I was like really upset with myself. I didn't love the way this was looking but I kept going and I end up loving the way it turns out. In fact, I'm sad about the amount that I covered up but here I took out my Tattered Rose Distress Ink and it's kind of like that it's like a peachy color and so I really love it and so I'm trying to use those light soft colors that are at the top of that of those layers of flowers um, right there and then what I decided I was going to try to do this is an older dear Lizzie uh, stencil or mask and it is the prettiest I love it and I looked for it recently online and couldn't find it so I apologize for anyone who's looking for that but Oh, that looked cool. So here's what I was trying to do. I put the ink all over the stencil, then I misted the stencil with water, and then I pressed the paper to it and it gave this really nice uh, floral look. And so that's what I was trying to do here. But when I did it on my paper, you couldn't even tell they were flowers. It just gave it, it, it looked like I was just adding more texture to it, which actually ends up helping, but it doesn't, you can't see the flowers really at all. And so that frustrated me a little bit. So here I'm trying it one more time and I'm gonna to try to press my paper to it, but I just felt like I wasn't gonna get it in the right spot if I did that. So um, I was a little bit frustrated, but what I decided to do is grab my Distress Ink tool. This is the round, little round one. And I'm just going to add some of the purple uh, to the actual stencil. And this ends up looking really, really pretty. Uh, I tried to show you up close for a brief second there but you can see at the top right how that gives those interesting lines and I really love 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 the way it looks and when you look at the layout closely you see those little details and I just love them so I this is maybe my favorite stencil I don't use stencils very often and maybe I will use them in an upcoming use it or lose it video but man I loved it for this so I'm adding some of that mold lavender or I thought milled lavender and then I also add some tattered rose and it's just those are like my two favorite colors right now they're so pretty and they're so pretty together so I highly suggest those two colors together um so now I'm thinking about what I want my title to be and 
this is my grandma. It's my dad's stepmom, actually, but you know, we just call her grandma. And she, growing up, she always called all of us Grace. Like, it, just as children, she'd be like, yes, Grace, or um, what do you need, Grace? Or like, like that was your name, kind of like calling you sweetheart, but she called you Grace instead. And so I wanted to tell that little story on this photo of, of her holding my daughter. Um, it was, we went to my cousin's wedding and it was a little bit chilly outside. So she kind of wrapped her up in her little uh, shawl or scarf thing that she had on. And so what the story I'm, I'm wanting to tell here is about how she used to call us Grace and how I feel like my grandma epitomizes the word Grace as well. So I'll read you that journaling in a minute. But what I want to just show you now is I'm using the flowers again and I am going to just create, um, I'm going to use them as actual flowers now, not to create those layers. And I am going to double them up. I feel like when you put the when you put the flowers together, it gives that that more dimensional look and it just makes it feel a little bit more fresh for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but I'm also pairing it with some gold leaves and I'm going to put a gold sequin in the center. And I feel like I know I had a million bazillion flowers back in the day when I first started scrapbooking. I had tons of paper flowers. I still have the jars from those paper flowers from Prima and Fancy Pants had them. All kinds of different companies had them. It was the thing. Um, and I feel like I just used them like I'd use a single flower and I'd put like a brad in the center of it and that was how I used it. But I feel like um, the key for me to making these look fresh and, and exciting on this layout is just switching things up, layering them differently, folding them differently, the colors that I'm using, the way that I'm arranging them. Um, and so you'll see when I when I put those the flowers that I'm using as flowers down that they have a little bit more of an updated look because of the leaves that I use along with it and also because of the gold and uh, the way I layered it. At least in my eyes it does. So my title is Hello Grace and I'm using the word hello that's from the 6x12 sticker sheet. And um, I have both the scrapbook.com exclusive 6x12 sheet and the one that just came regular with the kit. So I am using both of them on this layout. And what I decide to do here is I am going to attach the sequin with a French knot. And I, I've actually never done this, or if I have, I don't remember doing it. And so I had to like Google a little <laughs> YouTube video on how to do a French knot, and I'm using the most obnoxious thread possible. At first, I was just gonna use some white embroidery floss, and that's why I pulled out my little bin of embroidery floss there. And that's actually, <laughs> I was just starting to, to get that going on my needle, but then I decided that I was going to do this gold thread, and I layered it up so that it's four threads um, and because I want it to be thick enough to actually create this this French knot with the like that you can actually kind of see and so basically for a French knot I found after I googled it that what you need to do is you pull the thread up through the center then you stick the thread down like right next to the sequin and you wrap the thread around it and then you poke it back through and pull it tight and it creates like this little nest. And with because of this this uh, gold thread, because it's so thin and, and I used four strands, it's a very little, it's kind of like a tiny little messy nest of thread in the center of the sequin. And I'm totally cool with that look. I think it looks cute. I'm fine with it. I thought about putting um, little... In, um, what are they? Enamel dots in the centers, but I just thought that the sequin was a little bit more of an updated look and I didn't want it to look like a brad because that's how I felt I used to use them back in the day when I, and I'm trying to get past that. I'm trying to make them fresh and new. So here I'm trying to decide how I want to complete this layout. Now I put that flower there and I stitched it on the layout so it's not going anywhere, uh, but it presents a little problem for me because there is that trapped space between the flower and uh, where the little uh, row of of the um, stacked flowers is at the bottom. So I'm going to try to fill that, the entire layout pretty much. I'm going to try to fill that space. And in the end, I, I figure it out and it works out okay. I kind of feel like I maybe went a little too far on this layout, but you know, I like the way it turned out. 
Um, so here what I'm doing is I'm going through the Maggie Holmes. There's a die cut package that's just flowers, which is typical of Maggie, which makes me happy because I love flowers. I love the flowers. They're so cute. So I want, I liked the idea of pairing these paper flowers with some, um, more updated flowers. So at first I thought I would mix in some of these die cut flowers with those paper flowers, but then I decided to just incorporate the leaves. And so I'm going to play around a bit with this. And I'm also thinking that it's cute how that bird rests there, but it feels like its tail needs something to ground it. But then I don't want it to feel like it's pooping something out either. And so the hummingbird fits in that space really well. I love the way the wing kind of fits around the word grace and it ends up where the hello starts, but I don't really like the way that bird looks as much. The color of it is, isn't right to me. And so I'm going to play around over and over with that. Uh, and I thought about having the hummingbird overlap the flower so it looked like it was kind of getting the nectar out or whatever, but I decided against that. And I'm thinking at this moment, I'm thinking I like the way that the green adds something. It adds a color to the top. And so at this point, I'm thinking maybe I'll add in those colored leaves. But what I decide to do, because that's taking away a little bit from that nice ruffle I created at the bottom, is I'm going to just stick with just gold leaves. And that that's a neutral. Well, metals are neutrals to me anyway. And so that helps it to, it, it still gives it what it needs, but it doesn't take away as much visually because all of the color is contained, kind of. So I hope that makes sense. So I'm just using some uh, glue dots and some adhesive to stick down where there are vellum leaves. I'm only putting adhesive on the parts that are getting hidden. And I'm just kind of tucking these in. I decide to put two flowers on, on the top right of the photo. And then I'm going to put um, one on the left of the title. So there will be three flowers, although there are two layered uh, on that on, on two of them, there are two layers of flowers. I don't know if I'm making sense right now, but anyway, so I'm going to do the other two uh, paper flowers and I'm gonna make the French knots on those as well. And I am just using some washi tape to hold it on the back because I was having a hard time getting that thread to tie four strands into a knot um, because that thread is so finicky. If you've ever played with gold thread, you know what I mean. So, um, here I'm just doing another French knot and pulling it tight and then, uh, just using some washi tape on the back. And I love that little tape dispenser I got in the Target dollar spot, although it was $3, but I'm just using it for washi tape that I use to tape stuff on the back of my layouts and I'm loving it. So those little gold leaves that are the fabric-y kind of looking leaves from the Maggie Holmes, uh, little die cut collection, they have wire in them so you can kind of bend them to make them uh, do what you want. So I'm kind of bending bending them so they look like they have a little bit of movement. And then with the other leaves, I'm just kind of, um, what I do is I take my my thumb on the top of the leaf and I take my, my pointer finger on the back of the leaf and I just kind of pull it toward me so that it bends the leaves up. I'm sure you guys know what I mean, but um, I just kind of do that to help give those leaves a little bit of movement as well. So now I'm doing the uh, flower on the left and I decided to make this one a little bit bigger. So when I do clustering, I like to do, I often do things in threes, like in a triangle or here I have two of the flowers clustered together and then one on the other side. So it's kind of, it, it's in two spaces, but there are still three flowers. And so because of that, I created one of the flowers larger, which is the one on the left because it's alone. And so that's just, I don't know, that's just something that, uh, those kinds of things are, are the things I keep in mind when I'm, when I'm embellishing is, um, where the embellishments draw your eye. If it's taking away from, a really interesting part of the layout or a really important part of the layout and also if if the layout feels balanced and then the other thing is the I don't want there to be any trapped spaces which is why that that space below the flowers on the right is going to bug me the whole time so right now I'm looking for something like what can I put there I don't know and I'm going to just agonize over it I really like the way that little vellum birdie looks uh resting on the grace now that it has all that flower stuff beneath it and it doesn't look like it's pooping it out because that's way too big for a bird poop. 
Um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, I'm a little bit on one right now. Um, so, but I, so I think the bird looks okay right there. I'm thinking about putting a little heart right above the word hello, but there's such a pretty little part of that stenciling I did right there that I really don't want to cover it up because you can see I've covered up a lot of it already. And that's just kind of the thing that happens when you put paint and mixed media on a background is you're going to cover a lot of it up and that's just what happens. So, um... I'm looking at the chipboard now and trying to see if I want to add one of those. I'm, I'm still like, I'm seriously agonizing over what I'm going to put in that space. And then I also thought like, okay, the bird has a lot of teal on it. So maybe I need to add a little bit of that color over here. So I have a little sticker and I cut it in half and thought I would add just, so it looks like there's two little green leaves uh, coming out of the flower cluster, but I really don't like the way that looks. And so... I'm going to see if I want to sprinkle some sequins and I'm just like I'm having the hardest time. I don't know why. So I decide to move on to something that I'm sure of and that is the journaling. So I went ahead and on my We Are Memories typecast typewriter and I typed it up and I'm just cutting it into strips. You can see I used uh, the same paper that I used to mat my photo I used to put through my typewriter and it just seems like a good length uh, for journaling strips when I cut them up like this and I just use my little swing line guillotine trimmer which I got at Office Depot or something like that uh, and here's something interesting so I didn't know with with a layout like this I could put if I only had a few things to say maybe I would have put my journaling below that flower cluster on the right um, or it could go next to the bird on the left and kind of between the bird and the and the photo but because I had a lot more to say, um, I decided to do the journaling strips and I'm cutting them up and I'm going to glue them on top of those flowers. And it's at first I'm using my liquid adhesive, but in the end I will turn to glue dots and I'm going to kind of press them down into the leaves. And so they have a lot of d uh, dimension as they rest on the leaves, which I think is actually kind of cool. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about it at first, but... As I'm gluing this down, I'm just going to read the journaling to you. So it says, growing up, my grandma cook always called us Grace. Hello, Grace, or what do you need, Grace? I always thought it was interesting. Grace can mean elegance or refinement, which I always thought she had. It can also mean to do honor or credit to someone by your very presence. And she always made me feel important when I was around her. Happy to capture this little moment with my girl and my grandma, the epitome of grace. So I just wanted to kind of talk about that, that little story. Like, I don't know when I would ever tell that. I don't have a picture of, of that specific incident or that's just some, some little memory that I had. And so it's a good way to tie a memory to a photo of my daughter now and my grandma that I don't have like really a specific story I want to tell. Uh, I can just... Uh, tell a story that is from my past that I remembered and and relate it to now. So uh, what I decided to do with that space that was bothering me so badly is to go ahead and stamp the date there. So I'm using my Chamel roller date stamp and just stamping the month and the year. Now I'm going to come talk to you about some other ways to use these flowers. Okay, so I had a lot of fun with that layout. Look how many flowers I still have left. This thing is overflowing after I used so many, you can see how many, on this layout. Um, and so these flowers last forever. That's probably why you all still have some around, right? So I wanted to show you a couple of ways that I would use flowers in the future. Although I'm going to say right now that I am going to maybe use a few more of these on an upcoming project very soon while I'm still excited about this, but then I'm gonna get rid of them. Um, the flowers were fun to play with for this layout, but uh, I don't think that I would be induced to purchase them for future use. But if you have a bunch in your stash and you're not wanting to get rid of them, I think that these are some fun ways to use them. So the first thing I would mention is don't forget that you can customize paper flowers. So. Um, if you have a color, like let's say this one's pretty light and there's some pretty light colored ones in here. I'm sure some of you have white flowers too, but you can color these flowers. And so I have this Seedless Pre Preserves Distress Stain and I just pulled this one out because it has a round applicator. But I was just going to show you that you can like add a bit of color to these, you could add just a little bit to the center. Now, if you wanted to, I could grab this right here and a paintbrush. Let me see if this one has water in it, no. 
Okay, here's a water brush. Now what I could do, I'm gonna take just another one here, is I could pick up this color. So you could use watercolor or any sort of ink and just kind of paint it in the middle. And it's going to stain the center and you can use less and less water as you get toward the outside. And right now it just kind of looks kind of wet. It's hard to tell when you're doing the tone on tone. I'll show you on this white one how you can kind of tell a little bit more. And I'll just add a little bit of water so it's less. And you can get some fun looks uh, that are just a little different. I mean, it doesn't. this isn't a way for you to actually use the flower, but maybe it will inspire you to want to use it once you've done something to it that you like the look a little bit better. So let me just hit this with my heat gun and show you how it looks when it's dry. This one especially I think will be pretty. All right, well, <laughs> they're not drying as fast as I thought, but look how pretty this one is. So um, just an idea for you there that you can uh, change up the colors a little bit. You can do it with an ink dauber or you can do it like with just regular ink. So I wanted to show you with a pink flower. Let's take this one here. I can add a little bit of a darker pink center just by adding a little bit of pink to the inside or I can change the entire flower if I wanted to. And I could add like a lot of darker color in the center like this and then just kind of lightly brush the outsides and because this is dimensional you're going to get that um, like the different tones because the the ink is only going across the top most layer for the for the most part. So you can see that you get um, a lot more dimensional looking flower. The other thing I wanted to mention that might help you use your, your flowers more is to pair them with, with more current products. So like I did here, I added um, the Maggie Holmes new collection in with this and so it makes it feel fresh and the color palette also makes it feel fresh. The other thing that you can do to make things feel fresh is to pair them with um, like a fresh leaf. So these leaves are very popular right now, these Mon Montserrat or whatever and then um, also kind of like palm fronds and stuff. And so if you use a leaf that's a little bit more updated, it makes your flower feel a little bit more updated. So this has a very tropical feel when I add this kind of leaf to it, which I love and which is um, kind of a more uh, current look right now, I guess you could say. Uh, so you can try adding different kinds of leaves to your flowers to give them a little bit more of an updated look. Another thing that I would uh, suggest trying to do that is fun and kind of cute is you can um, on my layout I just stacked two flowers like this and laid them flat but if you do other projects besides scrapbooking if you do card making or something that you don't mind a little bit of dimension to oh here's another leaf I wanted to show you it looks cute with this so especially the colors I think colors really have a lot to do with how fresh things feel but um, the thing that I was going to show you with with the flowers is that you can um, crumple them up so that they have more dimension and they it gives a completely different look. So for example, I'm going to start with the smallest first and I'm going to just build a few layers here. Let's just do these. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press these up. Oops. I'm going to press these up together so it's nice and tight. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a glue dot just put it on the bottom. I'm gonna press it onto the next flower and I'm gonna press this one up around it. And then I'm gonna put a glue dot on the bottom of this one. Now you can see it's pretty dimensional already. Even if you just wanted to do the like these two and scrunch them up, oops, that was very uh, not centered. But if you wanted to just do a couple and scrunch them up for the center, that's not super, um, I mean it is dimensional, but you could flatten it out a little bit and it would still give a cool look. That's very different than just layering the flowers one on top of the other like this. Um, it gives it a much cooler look. 
Um, and so you could keep going if you wanted to. You could squish this one up and then put it onto this one and, and keep going as, you know, as much as you want to. So that's another idea is to just kind of scrunch them up. Um, then another idea that I had, let me move this out of the way, was to, let me just pull this over. I just have this random piece of paper and, and photo, but you can create a frame for your photo using your flowers. So kind of like what I did today, I folded all of the ones that I used today in half so that they had more dimension. So you could do the same thing and layer it underneath a photo and just go all the way around the outside. So you could use the same color all the way around if you have a lot of the same color or you could use different colors um, and just create a frame around your entire photo. Now I probably, I might not pair these exact colors together but you get the idea. Um, so you can create an interesting look that way. The other thing I wanted to point out too is that you can like don't feel bad peeling these apart. Like this is kind of a greenish color. Well, I could use this for a leaf if I wanted to. So I can, you know, peel that off and use it. Maybe I would use it on a smaller flower. See, I've now I've got leaves for this flower because I pulled off these from this flower. So um, definitely don't feel bad pulling them apart. And another thing that I think would be cute is if you, um, if you folded the flowers in half or if you just cut them in half, you could do that too. Um, but you can get the look of the flower that's kind of um, like raised toward the sun and you could stitch a little line here that makes it look like a stem or you could draw one. Let me just show you what I mean. This is just, you know, off the cuff here so it's not gonna be super amazingly cute. I'm gonna draw on the back of this in case I decide to use the front of that. Um, but you could do something like this where you just kind of doodle um, some leaves. Or, you know, you can you could draw them or you could stitch them or you could, if you have like paper, you can cut them. Um, I think that this would be kind of cute to do a bunch of random little flowers like this. I'm not good at, um, doodling. I just got a book though that's for doodling and I'm going to keep <laughs> practicing. <laughs> um, but that's, that's supposed to be a little <laughs> leaf that's attached to this. Anyway, um, and then you can fold a bunch of flowers in half and this one would look probably really cute. Um, and you can do different sizes so that you have your variation there, you know. Um, and you can create a little thing like this and you could even you could even do watercolors or something like that so you could create something like that with the flowers um, I think that that a frame like this around the photo would be really cute in a circle so you could do you don't even have to have a photo to frame right you could just create a circle using the line of the flowers and you could stitch the flowers down and create a circle and put your focal image or whatever you want inside of it. And I think that would be fun too. So I feel like right now I'm left with the colors that that feel, they're not as fresh to me, that they're just not my colors, but um, <laughs> so I'm not loving the color scheme here right now. But I hope that you can get the idea of what I mean. And uh, I hope that you'll try something with flowers. So will you take up the challenge? Join us on Facebook in the Crafty Use It or Lose It group and tag your photos on social media, hashtag Crafty Use It or Lose It. Can't wait to see what you create. So what do you have to use or lose? Leave a comment and you may see it in an upcoming episode. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future Use It or Lose It videos. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again next week.